So the dot was on a Monday. On Thursday was my regular, uh, there was a regular day when I listened to shortwave transmission every Thursday mm -hmm. for 10 years mm -hmm. in 915. Okay. And what uh, was the purpose of this? Well, that was when, uh, that was how they communicated with me. Oh, okay. I never met uh, another agent. Uh, I never met my handler in the United States. You know, you see that in the movies. It didn't happen with us. Okay. It, it was forbidden. It was too dangerous. Anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm dialing the frequency. I'm listening. I decrypt the message, and it says in so many words, uh, we have reason to believe that the F FBI is investigating you. Uh, you know, start, start emergency procedures Im immediately, uh, blah, 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 and th that was the end. <sighs> okay, so reason to believe. They weren't really convincing. They didn't tell me exactly what the reason was. So I thought there was some hope, and uh, I was still paying for time. I was still trying to figure out what to do, what to do. Uh, and um, I also started uh, some to take some measures to find out whether I'm being under investigation. There's somewhere, some, some things that you can do in your apartment where you, when something is moved, that people, when they look through stuff that is not in the same space anymore, mm. the same. So I, stuff that you were, that was, you were trained? No, no, no? I, I made that up, you know. It's, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> there wasn't, but, but I was trained to do one thing and, and I did that too, uh, to find out how uh, your mail is being opened. Mm. So you you uh, you write a letter to yourself with a fictitious address, and you know write something in there. And when you close the envelope, you don't you leave blank spaces in the glue. All right. So you close it, and but there's a couple of spots, maybe an inch each, where the where it isn't glued, because the generally mail is opened uh, by machines, and then it's closed automatically with machines so when when you get this letter and it's fully glued you know you got a problem <laughs> wow okay wow and one other thing is I, I did you know i uh i was extremely well trained to find out whether somebody's following me so i took a day off and i was wandering and w wandered around in new york city and i saw absolutely no sign that anybody was following me and and because i got feedback of, uh, of, in my training in moscow from from the 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 head of this this department a guy was really really good he said uh, he he gave me a compliment he said i was one of the best he ever worked with so that gave me more certainty that uh they may be wrong mm -hmm. so at least gave me more time to 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 play for time because at this point the the KGB didn't know that I received the messages. I could have been in a hospital, right? Or right. my radio was broken. Right. Um, because one time I actually had a an injury and for like three weeks I could not uh, do anything my, because my right arm was in a sling. Um, but then they uh, went to the extreme and did something that they normally wouldn't do. Uh, so on my way to work, uh, there was, again, it was a, a dark summer, um, a winter morning. I'm waiting for the A train on the elevated platform. And uh, from my right comes uh, a short man in a black trench coat, and he comes really close. There weren't too many people around. It was early in the morning. And he whispers in my ear, you got to come home or else you're dead. And then he walked away. Now, <laughs> people think it was a threat. Maybe 20%, but 80% chance was that, you know, he was a Russian, he spoke with an accent. He didn't quite understand what that phrase means. You're dead, you don't say it in this context, because then it could be taken literally. I can say to you, you know, if you, if you, if you do this, you're dead. It means you could lose your job, right? Mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, right. It's a metaphor, right. or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, but it seems like you just didn't want to believe. You just didn't want. I to didn't leave. want to believe that this was a threat. <laughs> right. it, it could have been, but uh, whatever. Uh, but here's the point. Now, they knew that I knew. So there was no more playing for time. Uh, in the next radio, in the next radio transmission, they. Uh, um, called me to uh, 
implement a dead drop operation. That's when when somebody drops something over there that that has maybe money or a passport in it, some kind of a container, and you go pick it up. Mm. That's the that's the real short description. Right. And they were actually they changed the emergency procedure. They were going to me in in uh, uh, to to give to me in a in a old rusty rusty old oil can uh, travel money and a passport to get out still uh, across uh, to Canada. I still hadn't made a decision, uh, but at least I was going to get the money right. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and and then then I knew I would have to make a decision rather quickly. So here's what what what. What happened, which is the most odd thing in my entire career as a as an agent, uh, the uh, the uh, operation was in a park in Staten Island. Uh, the spot where the container was to be placed, I found, I described, I knew exactly how to go there. I knew, uh, and I was told with regard to uh, these types of operations, I was also very good. They actually use some of my descriptions to teach others how to uh, describe a, a spot so it can be found. Mm. So I and it was this was in the dark for some reason. It's the only time we did this in the dark. And um, I I I go to Staten Island and there was a spot where uh, a signal was to be placed that told me uh, you can go and get the container. I did it. I put it there. The signal was there, so I walk into the park, and there was uh, supposed. To what type of signal was it? It's a chalk mark. Okay. Real okay. simple. Okay. Um, and I get to the tree with a hollowed bottom. Uh, it was really, really easy to find, and there was no oil can. I said, "What the heck's going on here?" I did a double take. I wandered around a little bit. Maybe he just like dropped it, and it. And it uh, it was gone. I couldn't. I, I couldn't find the container. So as I walked away from from that uh, failed operation, it said in here, "I'm staying." Really? You see this? How how uh, imbalanced this was? Because obviously there was. I was in danger in some way. Uh, and if I uh, disobeyed the uh, the command from the center, I could have been in danger if, uh, if, um, through the KGB, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, I knew they did not uh, treat defectors very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, all the good things for me were back behind the Iron Curtain. The the wall hadn't come down yet. That, that took another year. I I just knew that I had a lot of dollar savings. And I had a wife and a child, and and the the Russians even promised me once I'm done, they promised to give me a house, which is was a rarity in in the in the communist world. So everything good was over there, and everything not good was over here. The only thing that that was the counterweight was a smile of an 18 month old girl, and in here it said, "I'm staying." And so now the people always ask, "How did you? How did you do this? How did you manage?" You know, brilliant. It's another thing that just popped into my head. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm making up a story. I, I, so I sat down the next day. I wrote a letter in secret writing and told them, "Unfortunately, I can't, I can't come because I've, I have HIV/AIDS." And uh, that was a as good a lie as I could have come up with because they believed it. Really, they had no reason to not believe it. They didn't know I had a child. They didn't know I was married in the United States. They didn't know any of this. They didn't know what is, was going on in my head. Mm. They all, all they knew this. Yeah, man, I get to go back and uh, you know be celebrated as a hero because my uh, ten years were considered a success. I the year before I received the second highest decoration of the Soviet Union. Wow. Yeah. So they believed it. They believed it so well that they went to my German family and told them that I had passed away uh, from this dreaded disease. Wow. I didn't know that they believed this until I was able to reconnect with Germany. That's when I was told what happened. So for the next three months, I was very careful not to be predictably in the same spot at the same time. Mm. So I would go to work at different times. I would go zigzag. Uh, 
you know, I just like was unpredictable. And after I had already decided that the FBI wasn't wasn't going coming after me, and and after the three months, I said, well, I'm in the clear now. I'm going to live out my life as an American. <laughs> <laughs> 